every day will be Friday, no We got just to celebrate, though Like saying I am Friday, no My baby in one day all right hello hello and welcome back to the channel my name is Inzali and this is Inzali takes Africa for those of you who are new to this channel I'm Inzali I've been living on the African continent since 2015 can you imagine y'all it has really been a long time <laughs> time just flew by I help millennial women just like yourself create the life that they deserve while living on the African continent. On this channel, I'm sharing my life experiences, the good, the bad, the ugly. I'm sharing advice. I'm taking advice, all of those good things. But the number one thing is that I have a heart for Africa. I love everything Africa, including its people. So without further ado, make sure that you like the channel. That is a free way to support everything that's happening here. It also shows me what you want to hear more of. So I can give you what you're looking for. I can give you what you want, baby. Shout out to Sweet Tea from Married to Medicine. Also, you can always share the video. You can always leave me a comment in the bottom of this here video. I do read the comments and I do respond. So that's another way for you to get in contact with me. And if you want to follow me on social media, please go to my Instagram. It is Inzali Takes Africa. Same name as the channel. That way you get an inside look on the details of my day-to-day -day life. Originally, I was in South Africa, but now I live in Ghana. And who knows where I'll go next? Give me a suggestion in the comments. All right. So I don't, keep you, I don't want to keep you here for a long time before a good time, okay? Today, we're going to talk about one of the things that are big, big questions that I hear from women who are looking to move to the African continent. Doesn't matter what country, but women who are from outside the diaspora, when they're looking to move back to the African continent, this is the number one question. Are y'all ready for it? Give me a little drum roll. <laughs> Bing! Everybody wants to know, are they going to be able to find their husband? What's the dating scene like, sis? How are the men in Ghana, sis? What about South Africa, sis? Everybody is trying to figure out if they are not already married or in a relationship. They want to know, are they going to be able to find their somebody while they are living in Africa? Or when they're coming back and forth and they're traveling, they're peeping the scene. Again, are they going to be able to get their groove back and find their person while on the African continent? So I want to address that today. And I'm actually going to do a few videos around this topic because I get so many questions in my personal life from the YouTube channel and my DMs about this topic. I feel like we got to really talk about it. We got to do a deep dive. <laughs> okay. I also am very aware that on the state side, we have a whole bunch of our African brothers who are definitely making it more appealing to the women to date African men who are from the continent. So I want to start off this conversation by talking about what are sisters from the diaspora finding appealing? Because I don't hear a whole bunch of us saying, you know what, sis? I really want to try Chinese men. I really am trying to get me a guy from Qatar. Like, no, they're not saying that. So there has to be something that's drawing our attention towards these men. And so these are the things that I found in common with a lot of women, whether they were in my friend group circle and passing, and even from my own personal experience. So the very first thing that I think is drawing a lot of women in the diaspora to African men is this idea that African men are family oriented. They want to have a wife. They want to have children. They want to do the family thing. That is something that we don't readily hear. And specifically, when I think about my Black American women, we're not hearing that on a consistent basis in our dating pool selection. People who are like, of course, I'm going to be married. Of course, I'm going to have children. Of course, I'm going to create a family and a legacy and a lineage and continue on and on. We're not hearing that a lot. So then when you're meeting these men from Ghana, from Nigeria, from uh tanzania from kenya and they're saying of course like duh they almost say it like how could you think otherwise <laughs> you know um it's appealing because i think at the root of it all a lot of us want those things we want to have a good partner we want to have a family we want to have children with someone that we feel like we're going to be able to build something with so that's attractive okay another thing that is 
very appealing to women from the diaspora, I have to say, is that men from the African continent are more realistic about what they're going to get from a woman, what she's going to look like over time after she's had children, um, even just before she's had children. They just have more of a realistic picture of what women's bodies really look like. You know, in the West, we are oversaturated with the BBL bodies, the fitness guru body, the woman who is just like 0% body fat. And our image of beauty really is based off of European standards, which don't really fit a lot of black women's body type frame naturally. So you're combating that image. I mean, think about the manosphere and what all they're talking about. When they say they're talking about what is attractive. Half the time when they really start describing it, that is not the average black woman. That's just the truth. Whereas when you're looking at African men, Think about even some of the African celebrities who have wives. All of their wives are regular looking women. Not the girl with the BBL, not the girl who has lace fronts every single day, makeup be every single day. They literally have regular looking wives. She looks like your sister. She looks like your cousin, your niece, your aunt. Like they're more realistic. <laughs> and so that is appealing for a lot of women because it gives you the ability to be more confident in your natural state and still feel like you are attractive like that. You're not forever chasing a goal that's really unrealistic and unobtainable. So that is appealing to a lot of my sisters who are in the diaspora. And the final thing that I believe makes dating an African man appealing to women who are from outside is that on the surface, in the beginning, in the beginning, <laughs> um, African men appear to be more sweet more kind, more cautious with their words, um, more giving, more attentive. Um, they appear more serious about you and what you all have going on at the beginning as the appearance. So that is attractive because I tend to believe that a lot of women from outside, we are attention deprived. We are trying to be F boy free, but we keep finding F boys. And then you come here and somebody is sweet babying you, good morning in you, you know, um, taking you out and paying for it. Uh, just all of those things that we're fighting men on our side to do, they're just doing it here. And so that is very, very appealing for a person who has been deprived of that type of attention for a very, very long time. And so those three top things, I think, are what really whoop, reel the women in from the diaspora when it comes to dating uh, African men from the continent. And, and specifically, I'm really thinking about the women who live in Africa or come back and forth enough and are dating here enough to basically fit the bill. I'm not necessarily speaking about women who are meeting African men in the United States, especially those who are like first generation immigrants or second generation immigrants, because they have a totally different outlook. That's a whole nother video, right? Because they're Americanized, they're Canadianized, they're UKized, you know, whatever, whatever place that is, they're Australianized. They're operating under a different culture, but the ones who are from the continent operating within their culture, or maybe they just got over, to the states and they still have a bit of their their culture tapered or wrapped up in them this is what makes them appealing okay now this is where we f up ladies come this is where we mess up i'm going to tell you the top three things where we mess up when we are trying to date continental african men turn the volume up i want you to listen carefully okay the very first thing, you are confusing his cultural norm and equating it to his high, you're equating it to a high interest level in you. For example, an average man in Ghana, let's say middle class guy, if he is interested in a woman and he's courting her, Whenever they go out during the courtship, he's going to pay. He may pick her up, right, if he has a car, and expect that he's going to pick her up and drop her off. He may pay for her friends to also come out with her. 
in him at the same time. He's going to buy you little gifts and tokens to show that he's interested in you in some type of capacity, right? Even at the university level, the boys know that these are some of the things that they're going to have to do if they want to date a woman. That is the norm, okay? He's going to have you out in public spaces, right? Because they're not anticipating that at the beginning, you're going to allow them into your private space or you go into their private space. So most of your courtship is going to be very public, right? Um, that's the cultural norm. Um, you're going to meet his friends, right? Because you're going out to public places. So you're going to meet the people that he's around. Cultural norm. I find that a lot of my women from the diaspora, when they see those actions, they equate it to, oh, he's really, really, really feeling me. He must not be talking to anybody else because look at how much he's invested in me. Incorrect. Don't assume that. Because this is his baseline. He's going to be doing that for you. He could be doing it for Afia, Akos, Ama. It, the list goes on. Jennifer, Jessica, Keisha. What do you make of it? Keisha, Tisha, Laura. Everybody will get that baseline treatment because think about it. It's the norm that if a man wants to date, these are the things that he's going to do for a woman when he's dating her. He's not changing it up. All the women are going to get their dates paid for. All the women, if he has a car, are going to get picked up. All the women are going to meet his friends and go out with his friends from time to time. All of the women are going to have that type of treatment. So that cultural baseline norm of what it is to date seems high to you. That isn't a high expectation or evidence of a high interest for him. That's just the norm. If I want to court a woman, I have to have the money to do so. I have to take her out. Her friends might come. Doesn't mean that he's that into you. That's one of the pieces that we mess up. There are other green flags that we're going to talk about in another video so that on top of those baseline things, you're going to look for some of these other things that'll let you know, okay, he's really, really serious. This is, just isn't some like dating, you know, here and there type of thing. So that's the first one. The second way that we really mess ourselves up when we're dating Continental men is by moving too fast. Sis, slow down. I just want to get to know you. We have to slow down. Slow it down. I know we're excited. I know we're feeling like I've never been loved like this. I never been a symptom, but I never knew love like this. It's, <laughs> who sang that song? I don't know. It's an old school song, but nonetheless. Um, yes, when we move too fast, we miss things and you're already cross cultural dating. So you got to really pay attention because the things that you would pick up easily, if you were dating like a black American guy, you're going to miss a lot of those things because this is a totally different culture. It's a totally different environment. You don't know the space. You don't know their environment well enough to have the luxury of moving fast because you're going to miss all of the red flags. In addition to that, even if you're dating in the US, moving fast is never a great option. Anytime somebody is pressuring you to move fast, you need to pause and ask yourself why. Because I guarantee you, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they do not have good intentions for you for the long run. That same rule applies here when you're dating African men. When you move too fast, you F yourself up every single time every single time. Now, I know somebody going to get down in the comments and say, well, my Nigerian boyfriend or my Kenyan boyfriend or my Togolese man, we got married after three months and he did it. My sisters, there are rules. And to every rule, there's an exception. We're not going to talk about all the exceptions because that's what gets us messed up. We think our man is the exception. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, your man is not the exception. He is the rule. The rule is when you move too fast, you F yourself up, especially when you're dating African men in a new context under a new cultural lens that you don't fully understand and you have not operated in from birth until now. Cross-cultural relationships take time. You have to build the understanding. You have to build the trust. You have to build the know-how. You can't do that when you are married after three months, pregnant in six months, moving in in a year. Like you can't do that with that type of time frame. Take your time. That brings me to the very, very last one that 
we do that messes us up when we're dating these African men. And that is not reading the Yelp reviews, not taking advice from women like myself, other women who have been living in these spaces, been dealing with these men, been in the culture. We're not telling you the things that we're telling you out of jealousy, out of envy, out of hate, out of disgruntledness, bitterness, none of those things. We're telling you out of genuine concern, out of observations, out of lived experiences. So take the advice of the women who have already done the thing before. Take their advice. If they're telling you his family is going to be involved because African men value their family's input, believe them. Don't think that your situation is going to be different, that your African man with his African family, you're going to somehow be strong enough to build the boundary line that's not going to be crossed. It's not going to happen. 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 Read the Yelp review, sisters. Okay? Read the Yelp reviews. Do not believe that your African man is going to be the different African man. Listen, there are plenty of us who have had trial and error. We've already done the things. Um, and we're here to tell you what to look out for, what's good signs, what's not so good signs. And then you can take that information, apply it to your situation and move accordingly. That's the way that you're going to get the best outcome and get a partner that's really, really going to be good for you. That's really, really going to be all the things that you need, want and desire in a male partner. That's all. Okay, that's all we are here trying to do. And with that being said, please make sure that you like this channel. Leave me a comment in the in the in the you know the comment section. Let me know, like, is there anything else I should have added to this list in regards to what's appealing about dating an African man and what are, where are the areas that we messed up? Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. I mean, we can definitely go back and forth. Discord is necessary sometimes. I don't mind. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with me and more content just like this. And I will see you all in the next video. With that being said, bye.